Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Again, we hear some muttering from the peanut gallery. Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, as of yesterday, as of yesterday, Mr. Speaker, sir, 2nd September, liquidity in the banking system stands at $626.7 million, more than double since 2018. And, Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm advised that the Reserve Bank of Fiji says the liquidity may rise to $700 million by the end of this year, more than sufficient to meet, more than sufficient to meet the credit needs in the economy. Mr. Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, I really would urge Honourable Tambuya to heed the call by Honourable uh, Selai. Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Speaker, sir, um, I, I really feel that I, I have the need to say this to Parliament um, to actually educate people on the other side. Uh, what are the factors that actually affect uh, or influence, I should say, liquidity? There are several factors, Mr. Speaker, sir, including movements in foreign reserves and the currency in circulation. RBF activities, including its use of what we call the SRD, or Statutory Reserve uh, Deposit Ratio, its lending facilities and investments, and also movements in governments and deposits with RBF. In the interest of time, Mr. Speaker, so let me just focus on foreign reserves, RBF lending facility, and the SRDs. First on foreign reserves, this represents income we earn from exports of sugar, mineral water, garments, tourism, and inflows from external loan drawdowns. An increase in foreign reserves, Mr. Speaker, sir, results in corresponding increased bank liquidity as exporters convert the foreign currency to Fijian currency. Conversely, an outflow of foreign exchange for import payment results in a reduction of bank liquidity as importers draw down on the Fijian dollar deposits and purchase foreign currency. As for RBF facilities, Mr. Speaker, sir, the central bank has various credit facilities including its import substitution and export finance and housing facilities. It offers commercial banks and other financial institutions such as FDB and Housing Authority. When the RBF lends funds to the banks or, or the FDB or Housing Authority via these facilities, the liquidity, Mr. Speaker, sir, is added into the banking system. And the opposite happens when the funds are in fact repaid. We earlier, Mr. Speaker, sir, we had talked about RBF statutory reserve deposit ratio. An increase in the SRD, currently 10% of commercial bank deposits, would mandate banks to increase their deposits with the RBF and consequently reduce excess liquidity available for lending to individuals and businesses. A reduction in the SRD will increase bank liquidity. In many countries, Mr. Speaker, sir, the central banks actually use the SRD to suck in liquidity or to pump out liquidity depending on how the economy is doing. So, Mr. Speaker, so these are the factors that actually affect the, uh, the liquidity in the market. The other factor, of course, Mr. Speaker, so as we saw uh, towards the end of last year, earlier this year, where individual banks, uh, and a bank in point is Westpac, Mr. Speaker, sir, where best, Westpac, because it's one of the banks in Fiji, few banks in Fiji, there's actually a branch in Fiji, they have their own internal requirements. So if, for example, the head office in New South Wales or Sydney says to the branch in Fiji, we want you to increase the, uh, the amount of deposits you're going to keep in your own bank because of whatever risks that they may factor in, whatever internal requirements they may have. There was, there was of course, a rumor going around that Westpac was in the process of selling down the Fijian operations. Now, they have sold out in other parts of the Pacific. So, Based on that, Mr. Speaker, sir, if, for example, if I'm going to sell my business, I will want to make my balance sheet look good. And one of the ways of making your balance sheet look good is that you will actually try and suck in as much deposits as possible to make your balance sheet look good vis-a-vis -vis the cash that you have. So it was quite, uh, in fact, quite telling over the past some months back that Westpac, in fact, was offering very high interest rates for deposits. And so that led to a huge scramble for the liquidity in the market with the banks. Now, we can see that those interest rates have, in fact, come down. 
So you can have a major player like Westpac, which is actually holds the second largest uh, number of uh, second largest bank in Fiji vis-a-vis -vis its portfolio, had the ability to suck in the cash uh, from the uh, from the market, perhaps for their own internal considerations. However, now we've seen a rationalisation of that, and as a result of that, Mr. Speaker, sir, of course we now have a much more stable uh, market. We, of course, there's no doubt, Mr. Speaker, sir, that as I highlighted. Um, uh, uh, I think in the last session and also yesterday, that we can actually be affected by external factors. And these are things like, for example, the, uh, the, the prudential requirements by financial institutions that have the head offices offshore. They may, given what is happening in their own domestic markets, may actually put and uh, change their policies uh, in Fiji. Or secondly, because of the fact that, for example, if a certain economy does slow down, it can have an impact on our economy. To what extent? Obviously, something it depends on how we actually mitigate those, those losses, potential losses, or mitigate those challenges that comes about in our major trading partners. So liquidity, Mr. Speaker, sir, is obviously very critical. I, uh, one of the members, I think, from the other side yesterday spoke about you know, how he knows of some company not being, you know, accessing, being able to access credit. That depends on the individual company. It's got nothing to do with the banking system per se. He may need to change banks. There's some banks that are more readily actually lend, and in fact, in more, more credible or a lot more attractive, I should say, interest rates. So liquidity in Fiji is actually, in fact, quite good compared to what it was a number of decades ago. Of course, it's almost double to what it was at the end of last year. We expect that to double. Of course, how the uh, agriculture sector performs how the tourism sector performs has an enormous impact on that. And also, Mr. Speaker, so you'll find sometimes when, for example, the huge construction uh, that's going on, when people go and buy material from offshore, it will actually suck out liquidity from our market, which is obviously a positive thing because they also tend to pay VAT. So liquidity